penalty taker. Not half. That member of the centre backs union, Andreas Gronqvist. 12 years an international. They can't look. Gronqvist! He must have known something that we didn't. And Sweden have their first goal of this World Cup. So this is the view at the end of the match. A very, very happy Andreas Granqvist, the winning penalty taker for Sweden, seeing off South Korea by goal to nil with quite a lot of yellow-shirted Sweden fans inside. And we have a grey-suited Sweden fan inside our studio. No less patriotic, no less passionate. I tell you what, you have not seen Henrik Larsson dancing around so much <laughs> in your life, even when you're a player, I think. Happy man. Well deserved overall, do you feel? I think it's well deserved overall. I think that South Korea was very poor today. They didn't try to do something until the, the last 10 minutes of the game, and they needed to start a little bit earlier than that. I think that out of a tactical point of view, Sweden done the game as exactly as they wanted to do it. And uh, yeah, there's still more to bring from the Swedish team, I think. Uh, than what we saw today. But I'm very happy with this win, especially after yesterday when uh, Mexico beat Germany. Yeah, absolutely. And Grand Chris, the first player to score for Sweden at a World Cup since you back in 2006. And uh, it's looking very good for them so far. But it took a penalty to separate the sides. The seventh one we've had already at the World Cup so far. What did you make of the way that it was decided by the referee, Joel Aguiar? I think it's a clear penalty. I don't understand why uh, the referee didn't give the penalty straight away. I um, just have the feeling the referee are too rely about that VAR and he's, uh, he's killing the game. So uh, I think he's on the right position. We're going to ask to Mark. I don't know if you have any point of view about that. But it's, it's a clear penalty and the defender shouldn't make that take -up. You're confused by the whole situation, Ryan? No, I, I mean, ultimately the right decision was made in the end. I actually quite like how it played out because, yeah, it's a clear penalty. But if it isn't a penalty, then you see Korea there, it puts away what happens if, you know, it wasn't a penalty and the referee blows for a penalty and it's not. So it's the other way around. So I actually quite like how it was handled. Now, yeah, you want referees to make decisions, but the technology is there, so use it. OK, well, the technology is here to talk to our former FIFA referee in our truck outside. So, uh, Mark Clattenberg, you're watching that along with us. What did you make of the way that the decision was given? Should it have been made straight away? Or did he do the right thing by waiting a few seconds until the ball was in the midfield area before stopping play? I agree with Patrice and I agree with Ryan. Both have got valid points. It's how the system's being used, but also the timing issue, because clearly when the referee brought... The, the, the stopping in play I knew it was a penalty because Korea are on their promising attack so to kill that promising attack would be controversial so I would rather see a natural break in play and see what happens before they go to the penalty because it's still the referee has to make a choice when he goes to the, the review area that it's going to be a penalty but once he stopped that promising attack like Ryan said it was always always going to be a penalty kick but what, I con what I'm concerned about about the refereeing uh, so far certainly from the guy from Sal Salvador is he has a perfect, a perfect chance to see, the, to see the decision because when the ball comes over, he moves across beautifully. He's got an unobstructed view and he can clearly see this contact. There's a clear foul. Now, has the defender played the ball or not? But when we can see from this replay, we can actually see that the Sweden player gets a little touch on it. The South Korean defender comes in and therefore I can't understand how the referee at this level, bearing in mind, that FIFA approached the best referees in the world to make a simple decision like this. And what I'm concerned that is, are they relying too much on the video? And then you've got the other problem, the language barriers, because you're using other VAR referees from different parts of the world. And this causes me a concern. I just want the best referees in the world to make the correct calls on the pitch. Mm. So do you think that had VAR not been available, the referee would have backed himself to give that decision and wasn't just waiting for that comfort blanket, if you like, of having somebody upstairs to review it? Well, when, I, when I was on the shortlist program before the World Cup, uh, before I left to go to Saudi Arabia, we were told you are the best referees in the world, make the correct call. That's what you're paid to do week in, week out in your domestic league. It shouldn't change if you've got VAR or not. You want to make the calls correctly without technology. But what technology does allow you to do, when you make the, the serious error, which happens, I've made many in my life as a referee, 
but it gives you a chance to give you a second opinion to, to check it. If I was at this level, from that angle, unobstructed, I would expect that decision to be made easily. Well, the next obvious break in play could well have been a goal for South Korea up the other end. And I was speaking to a former top referee recently who was saying that's still a grey area that they haven't actually resolved. Is that situation of the next break in play being potentially even more controversial? And they don't want to heap too much more controversy on themselves, do they? Was that in his mind, do you think, when he stopped the play exactly where they did? Yes, but that then just makes sure that, you know, it compounds the error because he knows it's an absolute clear error. He shouldn't even need to go to the screen at that point because he must have been told down his earpiece by the video referee that it's an absolute clear penalty. Because if there was an element of doubt, which we've seen in other situations, then why would he stop it in that situation? Because he's stopping South Korea having a promising attack. I would rather see the play play out, even if it took another five or ten seconds. Uh, Sweden got possession, repossession of the ball. Then have, a, then have a quick check, if it's an opinion. But I, I, I'm, I'm convinced you shouldn't even need an opinion here. It's that clear cut. OK, the referee's not backed himself, but perhaps he has seen the incident between Vitesse Arnhem and Feyenoord, whereby it did go up the other end and they did score the goal. And uh, it was even more controversial. It was played out all over the world. So, um, yeah, it's still in its teething phases, VAR, isn't it? You give it more critical of the referee there, saying he shouldn't actually need that VAR there should have backed himself. Yeah, no, exactly. I think uh, the referee, like uh, Mark said, they picked the best referee. He's on the right position. So why he didn't give the penalty? Maybe because he know he had the VAR. And so I just want the referee to be the best. And so he have to give that penalty because it's a clear penalty. OK, he's decided the game, but it was the right decision. So it's not yeah, actually then, yeah. the biggest deal in the world. We're all still learning about how it works. Yeah. But to the football, which is really what we're here for, Henrik, delighted you got the three points now. But that makes it very interesting in the group, doesn't it? With Germany having lost their opening game to Mexico. How do you see that panning out now? No, I see that Sweden now give themselves a proper chance to, to go at this because winning today was absolutely vital uh, because we talked about the earlier Mexico winning yesterday and now they're playing uh, Germany in the next game and um, yeah, Germany are the ones that really has to do it so Sweden can sit back a little bit and counter-attack and then we see what that's going to give us. Oh, the pressure's on Germany. It's quite nice, isn't it? We've got to enjoy it while it lasts. Come on. Now, next up, one final look ahead to England's...